Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review. And before we get started, I have to say thank you to uh, my good friend Tom, who reached out and sent me some very kind decants. And this is one. This is called Gucci Guilty Oud. Uh, now, uh, this is basically going to be a discontinued gem fragrance review, uh, fragrance video. And I have a whole playlist of fragrances that I've reviewed on the channel that I would consider discontinued gems that basically do not fall high enough to be a Hall of Fame category. You know, it's not uh, one of the most vital fragrances from the past, or it's not at least 20 years old to fall into that vintage category. Um, so not good enough or not old enough to fall into the Hall of Fame category. But I love talking about vintage fragrance or, or discontinued vintage and discontinued fragrances are just kind of one of my things. Um, this is not that old though. This only came out in uh, 2018 and um, it actually came out a couple years after Gucci hired uh, their creative director, which actually just resigned last year from, from my understanding in 2023. Uh, the gentleman's name was Alessandro Michel. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and I kind of really liked the balls that that guy had. You know, he had a intestinal fortitude to put out things that were against the grain, that were a little bit different, you know, that went against the stream. I kind of really like that. Uh, he infused many Renaissance-inspired elements into his designs. You know, very interesting kind of uh, quirks, like uh, last his last year at Gucci, whenever they did one of their shows, they had twins walk down the aisle together. I kind of like some of that stuff that he infused. Um, and the fragrances were no different. You know, when, when he took over, he started to do things different with the Gucci fragrances. Um, and so... Unfortunately, though, many of the fragrances that were released under his creative directorship are already discontinued. So they just got wiped out already. Um, like, for example, we have Gucci Intense Oud from 2015. This is one of the first that he put out. Uh, and this is actually important to our review of the 2018 Gucci Guilty Oud. Uh, and in 2017, he released what is probably considered his best work in Fragcom anyways, and that's Gucci Guilty Absolute. I have a full review of this on the channel if you want to check out my thoughts, an in-depth uh, discontinued gem review, and one that I will be doing a discontinued gem review on. It just came up in my uh, 2019 This Year in Perfume yesterday is this little bad boy. This is Gucci Guilty Cologne. Lots of aromatic, oily rosemary in the top and uh, green notes. A well-made modern style cologne, if you will. Uh, I think Alberto Morias is the perfumer here as well. He did a lot of the Gucci stuff. And so all of that is discontinued, along with Gucci Guilty Oud, which we're going to be talking about today from 2018. So this falls into a... This falls into a sort of, um, you know, wave of fragrances that just got axed as, uh, for whatever reason. You know, there's a lot of fragrances that get discontinued nowadays. It used to be back in the day, a fragrance... Um, would come out and it would last on the market for decades. You know, they they planned in decades. Now it feels like they plan in months. You know, something comes out, if it doesn't sell for a couple months, bam, it's gone. No if, ands, or buts about it. Um, no second chances, you're out, you know, and they just put something else in. Uh, so it's kind of a sad state of the fragrance game because literally it feels like thousands of releases are just getting put out every year and they're just throwing shit against the wall to see what sticks. And if it doesn't stick, they don't, it's no skin off their back. They'll just throw something else against the wall because when a new release comes out, they generate hype. And this hype can force someone who would never buy something that was older to all of a sudden try to get in because it's new. Even though many of the new stuff just smells like the stuff they discontinued anyways. It's a sad state of affairs, but we're not going to go into a ramble today. We're going to try and stick on topic. So interestingly enough, for Gucci Guilty Oud, if you search Gucci Guilty Oud on YouTube, there's a ton of reviews on this. Um, and many of them call this a fruity oud. That's the majority of their, uh, review. This is a fruity oud. They focus on the blackberry and all that good stuff. And while it's true, it does have a blackberry note and, you know, that blackberry note, there's not many blackberry notes in perfumery, to be fair. One of my all-time favorites is, of course, Amouage Jubilation 25, which I have a comparison video on the channel between Jubi 25 and Jubilation, the new Jubilation 40. If you'd like to kind of hear my thoughts there, um, they both have this blackberry note from, from my understanding. And um, so while it's true that the blackberry note is not often used, and it does come across 
especially when you first spray, you're going to get hit with that fruity oud um, combination. It, it very shortly flips to me, to my nose. What I start to pick up on more, especially in the first couple minutes, is the spices. And so um, it almost has a little bit of a cumin-leaning vibe in the first couple minutes. Now, uh, many of the stages of this fragrance are short-lived, except for the dry down. The dry down goes on forever. I'm sure they're using some sort of amber extreme molecule is my guess that just makes it go on and on and on and on and on. The most boring part of the fragrance lasts forever. But um, the uh, opening where it's still interesting, the cumin hits you, the spices hit you. Um, there is a couple different notes. So it's mixed with things like um, pink pepper. So you get a little bit, bit of pink pepper in the opening, which is supposed to have a little bit of this rosy tilt to it. Like imagine looking through rose tinted glasses, but slightly peppery um, and patchouli and uh, a note of golden wood, which uh, we brought up the golden wood conversation whenever I reviewed Amouage Boundless just a couple weeks back. Uh, actually, Karine Vinchon Spinner wrote in her you know, on the on the inside of the Amouage packaging, there was like a quote by her. And one of the things she said is she wants to work with a golden wood. And many times that is a uh, reference to some sort of amber wood molecule. My guess is it's supposed to smell like golden woods because these uh, oil houses are not very good at namings. They're not, they're not, uh, art, they're not, uh, you know, artists or um, authors or anything like that. They are oil houses and their names are pretty terrible. So when you see something like wood leather, guess what? It probably smells like wood and leather. So golden woods probably are supposed to have some sort of a golden woody like hue is my guess, but it's probably some sort of an amber wood. I wouldn't be surprised one bit if uh, if that was the case. Actually, that probably is the case is my guess. Um, and But I'll tell you what, I was actually shocked when I first smelled this because of that cumin tint, that, that dry, spicy tint. You know, and cumin can sometimes give off a little bit of this um, almost like sweaty vibe, you know what I mean? Like, um, uh, you've sweated through your shirt kind of thing and, and there's a stain on your shirt and it's kind of left over and you're left over with the salty residue of the sweat and stuff like that. It's one thing for a niche house to do it. So for example, very early on in the quote unquote oud, Western oud game. So Tom Ford's oud word came out in 2007 and kind of set everything in motion. Uh, well, really you'd have to go back to M7 when Tom Ford was the creative director of YSL where M7 really got the ball rolling, but then when he created his own house, Oud Wood really seriously got the Oud ball rolling. And then we started to see everyone come out with an Oud. And one of the early adopters was La Tizan Parfumer, and they came out with a fragrance called Al Oud, which this is a Bertrand du Chafour, okay? Actually, this is a Bertrand du Chafour too, which I showed earlier. But um, this is a Bertrand du Chafour. This is also discontinued, by the way. It's no longer being made by Puig. Now that Puig bought La Tizan Parfumer, um, and this, uh, does what Gucci Guilty Oud does better, in my opinion. So right off of the bat, uh, Gucci Guilty Oud, uh, it's no masterpiece or anything like that. It's, it's a, it's a fragrance that has some balls in the designer space. My initial issue right out of the gate is that I have a fragrance that does it better. This is also discontinued. Um, and I would probably just wear this if I wanted this style of fragrance. But it does go in a little bit of a different direction. Uh, but my favorite part of the fragrance, the first 10, 15 minutes or so, does remind me a little bit of Al Oud. With that sort of spicy, uh, it just doesn't go as far. You know what I mean? So Al Oud... Um, is a niche house. It's, it's made from L'Artisan Parfumer, which is a niche house, right? And niche houses can take chances and do things a little bit differently. I was actually quite shocked um, that Gucci would put something like this out because, again, this is going with the trend of him trying to leave his mark, trying to leave his impression, trying to sort of leave his stamp uh, on uh, the Gucci line altogether and doing stuff that's different and challenging and challenges the status quo. That's why I really liked Alessandro Michel as a creative director. Um, I just think things at Gucci were just too entrenched. You know, the the culture there was just too entrenched for him to do what a Christopher Chong did at Amouage, for example. They just wouldn't allow it, right? Because they were all about trying to sell bottles. And um, Coty made many of their fragrances, right? So uh, they were created by Coty. That's the other thing. So there's probably only so far that they could go, but... Um, there is another Gucci, if you've ever smelled his interpretation of the women's version of Gucci Guilty Absolute, it comes in like a pink looking juice, someone sent me a decant somewhere up here, um, and it has 
a very prominent sort of Bulgarian rose, patchouli, blackberry, amber accord. Those four notes make up a big part of Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme. It also has that golden wood note, by the way, something to mention. So, um, you know, five out of the seven notes in Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme are found in Gucci Guilty Oud. They also both came out in 2018, and I've said it before, fragrances that are released in the same year sometimes will share a similarity. They're also both discontinued, by the way. Um, and so Gucci Guilty Oud, I think, takes more from Gucci Gil Guilty Absolute Pour Femme, I can't keep all of this shit straight, um, than it does any other fragrance, okay? That Bulgarian Rose, Goldenwood, Amber, Blackberry... Um, patchouli combination, those five notes, which are also found in Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme, make up a big part of Gucci Guilty Oud. But imagine you took kind of Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme and blended it with a little bit of Gucci Guilty Intense Oud, which was one of his first big releases when he was creative director in 2015. Um, and so that'll kind of get you in the ballpark, if you will. Uh, now, however, um, they both have that big Bulgarian rose note, which is sometimes seen as a little bit of a fruity and jammy rose. And that is um, a little bit of what you get here. And actually that big, fruity, thick, you know, gloopy, syrupy, whatever you want to call it, jammy, Middle Eastern style rose may be too much for some guys. So Gucci Guilty Oud is marketed unisex. Although, um, it's a big rose note. You know, many men in the Middle East wear lots of heavy roses and stuff like that. Um, and one of the reasons, of course, is the climate. But it's also the culture. Um, and, and I have no problem wearing rose. I have come to terms with rose. When I first kind of started my journey, I did not like rose. I actually got a sample of Lyric Man and gave it to my mother. Because I was like, I can't wear this. This is way too rosy. Now I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite rose fragrances. And so I've come, I've come around to it eventually, though. But if you're newer in the fragrance game, let's say, and you only have worn designers, and you stumble across Gucci Guilty Oud, you very well may think that the rose in here is just too much for you as a man to wear. Give it time. Give it a chance. You'll, you'll probably end up coming, coming along to it. It's a beautiful oriental floral take, but it's very designer. You know, it doesn't go as far as something like L'Artisan Parfumer, let's say. Um, and, and so that... Um, uh, interestingly enough, one thing that I that I will say is that sort of um, jammy rose in combination with the sort of fresh, thick, fat blackberry uh, keeps the scent feeling buoyant. You know, it, it it keeps it feeling hydrated, keeps it floating up on without sinking to the to the depths of sort of um, this dry desert spiciness. Otherwise, I really feel like the spices would have brought this down. I feel like the spices would have weighed this down because that dry spiciness that is similar to Al Oud, I think is what a lot of people miss whenever they are talking about Gucci Guilty Oud. And I think that is the part of the fragrance that Alessandro Michel was able to sort of um, put his stamp as far as being challenging and going against the grain and doing something that you don't usually find in a designer. Remember, Gucci Guilty the line is this disgusting bubblegum thing. I hate Gucci Guilty. Um, and, and so even as small of a little bit as this may be, because I mentioned some of the transitions in this fragrance in the opening go very, very quickly, right? So it goes through the fruity, generic oud combination thing that most reviewers really focus on. And then it goes to this um, sort of spicy phase, which is the most interesting to me. Because that dry spiciness mixed with the oud, I think, is quite brave. I really do. I think it's a quite brave feeling. But they don't allow the desert, arid, you know, acrid, dry, sand, dune feeling to take over. Um, I think if they added saffron and some other things, it possibly may have. Um, and, and dialed back the thickness of the blackberry and the jammy, dripping sweetness of the Bulgarian rose. I'm always sort of reminded of um, Alice in Wonderland painting the roses red when I say this dripping rose with the paint dripping off of the rose, right? Um, and, and so there is a little bit of that in here. There definitely is a little bit of this painted, jammy, thick, Middle Eastern style rose, which I think, you know, if they let it go further into what L'Artisan was trying to do um, with that spicy, dry, Oud Accord, I think it probably would have been a better fragrance than, than what Gucci Guilty Oud turned into, but I don't think that um, for a designer that they would have allowed it, because I think Gucci is still sees itself as 
more designer than niche, in my opinion. That's why Gucci Guilty Absolute, I think, was such a departure and why so many frag heads love this. Um, is, is it really is a huge departure from the designer side of what you usually get with, with Gucci. And so just imagine this sort of Western oud heavy tilt on Gucci Guilty um, Absolute Pour Femme, right? Uh, with this amped up Cipriol note. That's basically what they did. They took five notes from Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme the blackberry, amber, golden wood, Bulgarian rose, and patchouli, and they added the oud and cipriol. Those two notes make it, you know, Gucci Guilty oud. Um, and it, it definitely has this western oud, heavy cipriol, which can give off this uh, sort of, I always describe cipriol as having this um, almost like a EKG machine where it measures your, you know, heart rates and it, heart beats. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and it, it has this fuzziness to it, this earthy fuzziness to it. Uh, but Cipriol, I actually like. I like Cipriol as a note. Uh, and I think they've kind of balanced it. Because remember, I mentioned that the cumin thing going on, which is not really listed as a note here. But I definitely get something like that. Some dry spices, Middle Eastern style spices, however they blended them together. Um... In, in L'Artisan Parfumeres Al Oud, there's actually a date note as well, which gives it even more of that Middle Eastern feel. But here, again, they've used that blackberry. And the blackberry adds this tart, puckering, almost like um, sweet and sour ripeness, if you will. And now it's really good and cloudy out there. I was counting on that sun. Um, but just imagine this big, fat, fresh blackberry that is filled with juices and keeps the scent hydrated. It doesn't go into the sort of blackberry jam right so it's not like this big blackberry jam feeling um it's not this gloopy sweet blackberry with sugar it really does feel like a tartar more fresh blackberry it's just still sitting on the on the plant you can just you know pick it off and it's fresh um and but it's but it's plump filled with hydrating juices that keep this scent um you know hydrated really it keeps it from going too dry, right? Going too dried out, right? Like skin without any moisturizer on it, without any lotion, it keeps it from going that route. And the problem that I have with it though, is I like all of that. That's like the first 30 minutes. And really that's the majority of the scent for me. Um, because what ends up happening after 30 minutes is it does start going into that generic bubblegum, amber, designer, boring dry down. And it goes from 30 minutes to an hour to eight hours. I mean, it's like the rest of the scent just is so boring. I almost don't even want to talk about it. You know, it just, um, it really, to me, I think it loses the plot. You know, it loses what Alessandro Michel was trying to do by, by creating something that is the opposite of generic and boring and trying to do something that's different from what you don't usually see in the generic designer oud game, right? And you could tell he was trying to do it but so much focus is on the opening now. They don't even give attention to the dry down, I don't think. And that's the part that really put me off with Gucci Guilty Oud, um, is even though as it continues to dry, yes, you get little breakthrough bits of, you know, leathery spiciness, um, little hint of patchouli here or there, or whatever it is, right? I like the earthy Cipriol Oud combo thing. I like the Middle Eastern Rose, but it just loses the dry spiciness that makes it interesting and that blackberry note just kind of dissolves into generic boring fruitiness um and um you know it loses the tartness it loses the um puckering combo of sweet and sour that blackberry has uh and it just starts to get so boring you know it turns into what alessandro michelle is trying to stop it from being and I don't know if that's part of it, just it uh, feels like he can only do so much. You know what I mean? Like um, like he's trying to turn an aircraft carrier. There's only so fast you can turn the damn thing, right? Or I, I really just don't know if um, they would not allow too much of a out, you know, they would allow him to do a little bit, but not go too far. And even with some of this, maybe they just, that's why all of these are discontinued now. Maybe they just thought he went too far on the stuff we love which is sad because this is the kind of stuff I think that the frag heads really want. So I think he took the first step with Gucci Guilty Oud, but I wish he would have been allowed to go all the way. Maybe he didn't have control of, of everything. Maybe, 
you know, they, they set parameters on him. Maybe he was penned in. You just never know with these big houses when this much money is at stake. You never know what they're going to allow or not allow someone to do. So I don't know. I'm um, at a little bit of a crossroads. There are bits and pieces that I like of Gucci Guilty Hood. There are bits and pieces that I feel like are uh, different and interesting enough to warrant someone's attention, especially someone who likes discontinued fragrances that are getting harder and harder to get. Um, but then again, would I spend $100 or more on this? No, absolutely not. I don't even know if I'd spend $50 on this, to be honest with you. Um, this is maybe more like if someone gave me a bottle, I would wear it every now and then. But, um, you know, I'm glad I got to know it as I never got to know Gucci Guilty Oud from 2018. It really fills in a hole, I would say, between Gucci Guilty Absolute and then the women's Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme and this little bad boy, which I will be reviewing one of these days from 2015. So that's kind of my take on it. Unfortunately, I hate to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer. I will tell you my main scent of the day today was Russian Adams Quirtus, which is absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. Um, I love Quirtus. Love it. Um, this is the kind of stuff that's more getting my attention nowadays. You know, some of these designers, I do the videos for you guys, but I would never buy a bottle of Gucci Guilty Oud. Um, I'm just, I feel like I've come past that in my journey, and that's what this channel is about. It is about recording my journey on one side of the coin and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Um, and I try to be as open and honest about everything as I can. But these are just opinions. If you love Gucci Guilty Oot, obviously wear it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, it, um, it just falls into, let's say, a stacked deck. There's a lot of other players in this category. And I already own some of them. And so, uh, especially with how many releases there are nowadays, you can never own everything even if you had all the money in the world you just wouldn't be able to keep up there's just so you'd be buying every single second there's just new stuff constantly coming out um but anyways that's my thought if you have experience on gucci guilty oud uh do let me know love to hear your thoughts love to hear your, your um thoughts on also alessandro michelle and the house of gucci and where they're going and all that stuff and and how he was a, as a creative director i was actually a fan but um i think he had some good stuff but it just didn't go far enough for me uh, the, the one, of course, that I really love, I have, so I think this is kind of his masterpiece fragrance while at Gucci, but of course, you know, there's so much more going on when you're running a fashion house than just the fragrances, so let me know your thoughts, love uh, the interaction, love the back and forth as always, cheers guys, and I'll catch you next time, bye-bye.